Hello, how are you doing? I have just been away from home for a little over a week. I went on holiday to Lanzarote, uh, so I'm still wearing my holiday shirt. And uh, I think, I think maybe, do you think I've got a bit of a tan? I, I think maybe I'm not quite as pasty white as I usually am. And uh, so yeah, that, that was really nice. And when I got home, uh, there was a big stack of boxes that had come through the letterbox. And uh, these are, at least I think all of these are books from uh, that publishers have kindly sent me. And uh, so it's always wonderful coming home after some time away because it's like Christmas. I have like a whole load of new books uh, to open up. And uh, I, I did this before earlier this year. And so I thought I would do it again and, and uh, unbox these books uh, live so uh, we can discover what books I've got together. And, uh, and so hopefully there'll be some nice surprises here and things that I'm really excited and interested to read and uh, might be some things I've not even heard of before. I have no idea what is in all of these. Uh, you can see I've got quite a few here. Oh, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, yes, all of these books um, I have to uh, open up and and get through. Uh, so yeah, lots of nice surprises, hopefully. First off, uh, something from Europa Editions, uh, which really excites me because uh, I always enjoy their books. So here we go. Uh, okay, Trust. Oh, by Domenico Starnone. Uh, now, I've heard really great things about this Italian writer, uh, but I've never read her before. It is a her, right? Uh, it'd be really embarrassing if I got... Uh, oh no, it's it's he. It is he. Sorry. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, but I've not ever read him before, so I can make that excuse for not knowing uh, the gender of the author. Uh, but yeah, this is an author I've always been really really interested to read, although I'm slightly hesitant about because um, this author has been heavily endorsed by Jhumpa Lahiri, uh, who, if you know, uh, by that great author, um, has been all about Italian literature. And recently she endorsed another Italian author uh, whose book I had lots of opinions about. If you watched that previous video of mine, um, you know, I, I had lots of issues with that Italian novel. Um, but uh, maybe this is a writer I'll get along with more. I mean, I've heard really great things about him from uh, readers I know that I trust. And um, so, yeah, I think I think I will. So, yeah, this is a, a newly translated novel by him. Um, oh, it's actually translated by Junpa Lahiri. And it's about a love affair between a couple uh, called Pietro and Teresa. And they confess all of their deepest secrets to each other, uh, which causes a rift in their relationship. And uh, so, yeah, this <laughs> actually sounds slightly similar to kind of the content of like a Sally Rooney novel or something but, uh, but yeah I love novels about relationships and yeah it's a very cool cover. Next is a package from Fitzcarraldo Editions uh, another great publisher uh, whose books I always enjoy. So what is this? Uh, Strangers I Know by Claudia Durastanti and it is translated by Elizabeth Harris. Oh it's another Italian author. I, I mean I probably should have guessed from uh, the, the name Claudia Durastanti uh, but uh, yeah so this is an award-winning Italian Italian author and this is a novel, a uh, work of fiction uh, about family and life and about being a stranger within your own family and about uh, how uh, this character is trying to investigate their family's history but there's competing stories about uh, this this uh, family's history and uh, yeah I always find that really interesting and it comes with a quote by Ocean Vaughn um, who praises it saying it is brave and deeply felt here, the novel is not only a medium of illumination, but also a boy cast into the dark waters of memory, imagination, and boldly embodied questions. In other words, it is my favorite kind of writing, the kind that not only tells of the world, but burrows through it alive. Uh, so that's Strangers I Know, and that'll be published at the beginning of 2022. Yes, I'm already getting books that are going to be published next year. Next is a package from One World, um, uh, another great publisher uh, whose books I almost always enjoy. And it is The Comfort of Monsters by Willa C. Richards. Okay, so this is set in Milwaukee um, against the real life crimes of silly serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer, um, who is a fascinating, terrifying 
figure. So it's about the disappearance of a teenager and uh, about someone who is investigating that disappearance uh, many years later. Uh, so yeah, One World published um, some more like thriller type books and this sounds like it's more in that vein. Okay, I don't know who this package is from. So let's find out. Oh yay! Ah, hooray! It's a, a, a finished copy of Elizabeth Strout's new novel, O William. And this is a continuation of um, her series of books following the life of Lucy Barton. And uh, this is about her, her times um, as a recent widow and uh, the mother of two children and about her time reconnecting with her first husband, William. And I love Elizabeth Strout's writing so much. And uh, this, this books, I love, I love this style of how they've been publishing these Elizabeth Strout novels. Um, Penguin have been publishing them and um, yeah, they just look so beautiful and like lovely on the shelf. This is a package from Profile Books. So let's see what's inside. Courage is Calling, Fortune Favors the Brave by Ryan Holiday. Okay, so this is an author uh, that writes about how ancient philosophy can be applied to modern day life. And uh, I've never read him before, um, but this is all about uh, the virtue of bravery and talking about um, the history of that, thoughts behind that, and how it can be applied in our life. And actually, I'm quite keen to read this because I was in a class some time ago um, which was sort of like a religious class and they were talking about how the only things you really need in life are faith, love, and courage. And uh, actually when sort of looking at those three things, the, the thing I really struggle with personally is, is courage. And, uh, and I know that that might be sort of like strange to say, but I think just about being brave to like take opportunities in life and, and having the, the bravery for that. And, and so, yeah, I think that sounds like a really fascinating subject to explore. Like I don't often read self-helpy type books, but uh, um, this is the kind of approach to subject matter that I think I would find really engaging. Okay, I have another anonymous box here to open up. Oh, it takes a lot of muscle to open up these big boxes. Okay, uh, there's a book called The Movement by Petra Hulava. I'm, I'm guessing this is, oh yeah, it's, it, says on the, it says on the cover that it is translated from the Czech by Alex Zucker. Um, it's always good when the translator is named on the cover. Ah, so this is a feminist dystopian novel um, about sexual norms. And in this, uh, it's called The Movement, um, this, this uh, society which is formed. And uh, in this society, men are forbidden from being attracted to women based on their physical attributes in their bodies because in the history of the world that that's mainly the the first thing that has attracted uh, women to men men women yes <laughs> I'm getting all confused um, yeah when men are attracted to women it's usually based on their physical appearance and uh, so yeah I'm not sure how they would actually enforce that or, or go about it so um, I'm yeah I'd be keen to see how the author creatively explores that now I have a package from Faber um, whose books I think have been amazing this year um, so many of some of my favorite reads have been uh, by Faber this year and there's a police car going by so um, which you may be able to hear outside and okay so this is actually oh okay great um, this isn't just one book it is three books and it is a uh, reprints of William Golding novels and William Golding is a writer I've wanted to explore and read more of I've only ever read Lord of the Flies by him I think that's the only book I've ever read by him uh, but yeah so these are reprints of his novels The Spire and Pinch Martin and The Inheritance um, so yeah, if you've read William Golding and would recommend any of these books or me starting with any of these books, um, please let me know. There's another anonymous package here, um, which is quite thin, uh, but you know, they say sometimes good things come in small packages. Ooh, and this comes with a little insert too. Uh, so this is <laughs> a weird F. Okay, I'm not going to say this word out loud because uh, I don't want the, the video to be like uh, to get in 
trouble with YouTube uh, for for that. Um, so this is Weird Fs, and uh, it is by Lynn Tillman. OK, great. Wow, that's a really cool cover. Look at that. OK, this is being published by Peninsula Press, and it's a novella about a woman exploring and reporting on the ero erogenous zones of New York and Europe. Uh, so it's recounting her sexual exploits and encounters with men. And that is the kind of fiction which sounds totally up my street or down my alley or however you want to put it. Wow, this goes to show that you never know what you're going to open when you <laughs> open packages um, from publishers. So this is uh, another uh, book from uh, One World. So let's see what it is. Oh, Beasts of the Little Land by Julia Kim. OK, it's described as an epic story of love, war, and redemption uh, set against Korea's fight for independence. Uh, so it's set in 1917 uh, during battles with uh, Japan. And uh, yeah, it's about a story of a number of individuals that get caught up in that. And uh, so yeah, sounds like quite an intriguing, intriguing story. And uh, it's almost 400 pages long. And I do love a good epic, historical epic. Next, another book, which I don't know where it came from. Uh, so, oh, great. So this is uh, Burnt Coat by Sarah Hall. I'm an author I've found really intriguing before, but I've never totally fell in love with. But there are some other readers I know that absolutely love Sarah Hall's writing. Uh, but yeah, so I've, I've been intrigued to read more of her work. And it's a really beautiful cover. It's like very dark um, with these sort of like wood, wood, uh, wood, uh, wood, how do you describe it? <laughs> wood patterns on, on the cover. I guess that's how you could describe it. So it's a novel about passion, uh, connection, and transformation. And is about a woman who is a sculptor that is nearing the end of her life. And it sounds vaguely supernatural, but uh, yeah, I'm very intrigued. Uh, so the author says of this book, uh, like Burnt Coat's protagonist, I know art can't really offer a cure, but I had to write this book. And there's a number of quotes um, from authors I really enjoy. So uh, Sarah Moss uh, says, a dark and brilliant novel about love, art, and fragility in a time of crisis. And uh, Damon Galgett says, Sarah Hall makes language shimmer and burn, one of the finest writers working today. Next up, we have uh, the Exhibitionist by, oh, Charlotte Mendelssohn. I'm trying to remember if I've read this author before or not. So um, she's published the novel Love and Idleness, Daughters of Jerusalem, When We Were Bad and Almost English. And I think I might have read When We Were Bad or Almost English, but I can't really remember. Oh, the sun has just come out really brightly. Um, so it's the story of a momentous weekend when a family gathers together when uh, a famous artist and notorious egotist uh, prepares for an exhibition of his new art. And this uh, also comes with a statement from the author, um, which is the first paragraph is so great, I have to read it out. So um, the um, Charlotte Mendelssohn writes, uh, Dear reader, this novel was a bastard to write. There are some subje subjects sensible writers avoid, toxic material and family dynamics when married, sex ditto, art success. At first, I tried to steal my new novel away from these danger zones. For seven long years, I convinced myself that I could set it in a hotel. Yes, with a tower. Hmm. From the perspective of an adult's daughter coming home from Japan or Russia or Essex. But it was impossible because what I needed to write about these flammably taboo subjects were refusing to stay buried. And at last I surrendered and the exhibitionist took shape. So that sounds really intriguing to me. And I do like stories about art and artists and uh, things like that, except when they're written by Rachel Cusk. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I would be really intrigued and excited to read this. Ooh, another mysterious, small, very thin package. So let's see what's in here. Oh, wow, this is... <laughs> 
So this is called Biography of a Fly. Um, it comes with this little uh, wraparound thing um, by International Booker Long Listed. Oh, Jape Robin, uh, yeah, who was just listed for the International Booker Prize um, earlier this year. And I, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Is it Yap, Yap Robin or? something like that. Or, and this looks to be like quite a short comic novel that is, uh, that's also illustrated. Um, so you can see there's these illustrations uh, all about the history of a fly's life um, from the moment of conception um, to being uh, his state as a larvae and then um, through his life. And uh, so yeah, this, this looks quite fun and creative. Although on my recent holiday, flags were such a plague. I had this like beautiful little like seating area area outside where um, my partner and I would have breakfast each morning and I uh, and it had this beautiful view of the countryside and cactus and it was so gorgeous but then these swarms of flies would come around and it was so annoying and they were so persistent um, but, but, uh, but yeah this does look like a fun book. Okay next up we have uh in Every Mirror, She's Black uh, by Lola Aknemade Ackerstrom. Totally butchered that name, didn't I? <laughs> okay, this is dubbed an arresting debut for anyone looking for insight into what it means to be a black woman in the world. And it's about three uh, black women uh, making new lives for themselves in Stockholm, um, whose lives are all connected to the same influential white man. And so it tells their individual stories and their relationships to each other and what happens. And so um, it's uh, called a timely, richly nuanced novel that touches on important social issues of racism, classism, fetishization, and tokenism, and what it means to be a black woman navigating a white dominated society. So that sounds really good. And it's uh, just been published in October, so very soon. And yes, the, the light has come out again. <laughs> it's been a very stormy day outside. But, uh, you know, back to English weather, uh, but the sunshine every once in a while breaks through and uh, I just suddenly become very lit. Okay, next package here. Uh, this is a fun adventure, isn't it? Uh, so this is Little Gods by Men Jin. So this is being published by Pushkin Press and it's set on the night of the Tiananmen Square massacre. And it's uh, the story of a family um, that is connected uh, with that horrific event. Uh, so so yeah, sounds like a really powerful novel. And the light has just gone away again. <laughs> so okay, I only have a few more packages to get through. Uh, I told you there was there was quite a lot. Oh wow, oh, yay! This is so exciting. So it is Manifesto by Bernardine Evaristo, um, her memoir, uh, which has just come out. And like I, I said recently, like she has had the busiest year, like ever since she was the uh, winner, co-winner, real winner of the Booker Prize. Um, she has had such a busy time and it's been so amazing seeing her embrace all of the opportunities that winning the booker um, has has given her and and um, and really used it as a platform to talk about issues and raise the profiles of writers that she really cares about and uh, and yeah I think it's gonna be so great reading about her life story and her development as a writer and uh, because yeah I loved her novel so much I've been wanting to read more of her fiction but yeah really excited Excited to read her nonfiction now as well. And there's another siren going through. <laughs> Okay, next up, uh, we have another very thin package, but, but it's quite a large one. So I'm intrigued what is inside. Oh, yes, this is, oh, actually, this isn't a book. Um, this is just a publisher's catalog by Head of Zeus um, talking about new upcoming titles they have. Uh, yeah, so these are always really fun to, to look and flip through because, um, yeah, it talks about upcoming books. And if there's one that really takes my fancy, I mean, I barely ever contact publishers um, to, to request titles, but if there's one that really takes my fancy, I'll probably get in touch with them and ask them about it. So this is from their spring catalog. Um, so yeah, I'll 
enjoy having a good flip through this to see if there's any books that uh, I really fancy. Okay, final package we have. And uh, yeah, this has been quite a journey, hasn't it? Hopefully this is an actual book because it'd be disappointing to end not an actual book. Okay, yes, it is an actual book. Uh, so this is uh, Things We Do Not Tell the People We Love by Huma Qureshi. Okay, so these are short stories and uh, they're obviously about a whole range of subjects but seem to revolve a lot around uh, intimate family relationships or intimate relationships between partners and uh, one of the stories it uh, describes on holiday lovers no longer understand each other away from home um, luckily I didn't have that on my holiday so um, so that's that's good and I can sort of read these with a, a secure mind but um, it comes with a, a quote um, praising this book uh, by Lucy Caldwell who's a really great Irish author um, whose books I, I really enjoy I, I love her short story so I trust her taste. And uh, she writes that Huma Qureshi writes the in articulable distances between mothers and daughters, uh, the consuming ache of longing for someone not yet kissed, the invisible irreparable breaches in friendships or between lovers with such pitch perfect precision. Uh, that sounds like a tongue twister, doesn't it? Pitch perfect precision. Uh, sorry. Uh, with such lightness of touch. These are stories of fierce clarity and tenderness. I loved them. So yeah, that's quite an endorsement. And uh, yeah, I love I love this cover with a couple of strawberries on it. Although it doesn't look like this is the final cover. I think this is just a proof copy. So this is um, seems to be what the the final cover will look like. But anyway, yeah, I'm really looking forward to diving into these short stories. And maybe I'll read some of them with my partner because I, I talked about before how I love uh, reading short stories aloud to my partner and and him reading short stories aloud to me. And actually, we did a lot of that on the holiday. So I'll talk about that in a future video. But um, but yeah, this has been a really Really great haul of books. Uh, so let me see if I can hold all of them up without dropping them. But yeah, these are all the books I opened up. But uh, but yeah, let me know if you're interested in any of these books in the comments below. I'll put links to all of them below and, and list them all in the description um, if you want to find out more about them. But uh, yeah, thank you for following me on this journey of opening up all this book post. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.